it's spooky season, you know what I mean? We're here for some evil people and uh, killers, so let's do it. On that fun note, here are the top 10 scary evil people you need to pray you'd never meet in any way, shape, or form. Let's do it. Number 10, David Berkowitz. Also known as the son of Sam, David Berkowitz is a killer who, again, thinks that he works for the devil, which is obviously a horrible start. This time, the real culprit for the horrible crimes was a demon who had taken the shape of a dog that belonged to his neighbors. That's who he put all the blame on. So if you ever find yourself in, a, in some hot water, just blame the neighbor's demon dog. See if that works for you. David led authorities on one of the largest manhunts ever seen in New York. And in true twisted killer fashion, he left notes behind, trying to be arrogant, trying to be cool, thinking he would never get caught. You know, working a nine to five in the underworld, you'd think there'd be more places to duck out and hide, but oddly enough, David was caught and oddly enough, he was convicted. He later admitted to making up the dog story, which, I called off the hop, I knew it. But he did say that he was a member of a violent satanic cult and his crimes were committed as part of that. So I was like, hey, it's good. No, it's actually way worse. Now we're talking about cults. Number nine, Robert Picton. This horrible person is one of the worst Canadians to ever live and is one of our country's worst serial killers ever. Picton dropped out of school and began working at his family's pig farm, and this is where most of his absolutely horrific crimes took place. He was first arrested in 2002 and was convicted in 2007, taking the lives of six people, but throughout a long investigation, evidence of many more killings ended up coming to light. So it was bad at first with six, and then it went way up. During his time in jail, an undercover police officer posed as a cellmate and Picton actually confessed to him, he confessed to 49 crimes. So a little higher than six. Apparently he was saying to said undercover officer that he wanted to take one more life and make it an even 50 and that he only got caught because he was, quotes, sloppy. The entire trial was a bit of a mess, but it led to a life sentence without the possibility of parole for 25 years, which was the longest possible sentence under Canadian law at the time. This unfortunately does mean that he will be eligible for parole within the next decade. So let's hope, you know, nothing happens anymore with this guy. Let's just keep them locked away. You know what, like after 42, you're like, no, people can't change, actually. Number eight, Chester Turner. Chester is an American serial killer who on April 30th, 2007, was convicted of taking the lives of 11 women in the Los Angeles area. And on June 19th, 2014, he was convicted of four more that they were able to then tie back to him. He has been referred to by prosecutors as one of the most prolific serial killers in the city's history. And if you know anything about Los Angeles history, that's crazy. In his original trial that led to conviction, Chester was sentenced to death. But at the following trial in 2014, he also received an additional sentenced to death. Now we're at two, that's lovely. In the end, like with a lot of these kinds of stories, in the end, DNA came to save the day and help authorities find out who was committing these horrible crimes. So yeah, science changing the game. Who done it? Number seven, the Zodiac Killer. This one had to make it on the list because, well, it had to. There's a plethora of terrifying people on this list. Nothing is as terrifying as an uncaught serial killer. And the Zodiac is definitely the most prolific of that category. The Zodiac Killer, they made movies about this guy. The Zodiac Killer took the lives of five people in the San Francisco Bay Area between December 1968 and October 1969. He was most known for targeting young couples, sadly, or lone male cab drivers. Despite two people luckily and thankfully escaping his attempted evil doings, he has still never been caught. Number six, Albert Fish. Albert is one of the oldest people on this list. Got a bit of an old head here. He was dubbed the Brooklyn Vampire. He was also dubbed the Moon Maniac. He was also dubbed the Boogeyman. So again, cool nicknames for cool dudes, love it. It's clear that Albert was a terrible human being who did terrible things. That's why he's on this list. In the early 1900s, for example, Albert was arrested, tried and convicted for killing and then consuming three people, but the horror was not over yet. No, as if it could get any worse than that. No, Albert began to claim that although people knew about three of these killings, the number was actually closer to 100, give or take. And he even claimed that that he had some, some in every state, which is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. And to make matters even worse, as if again, wasn't already terrible enough, this deranged lunatic also sent a letter to the mother of one of his victims, just detailing everything about how he lured her and the rest of these horrific events that took place afterwards. I can't even talk about it, but that's the worst thing I've ever heard, I think. That's one of the worst things I've ever heard. Number five, Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey is one of the most well-known serial killers with his crimes taking place from 1978 to 1991. Have you watched the Netflix movie or the documentary, one of the 
hundreds of things on murderers now for some reason. Every killer gets his own Netflix special, apparently. Well, his crimes are far too brutal for this channel, but he's known for taking the lives of 17 different people. Again, if you've seen the documentary, you know what's up here. At his trial, not only did he plead not guilty, but his attorney had some pretty interesting words for the court. His attorney said that he became enamored, overwhelmed, even caught up in a character from the movie Exorcist 3. Which character? Well, he got caught up in the character of Satan because, you know, he's the personification of evil. Who better, right? Not only was Jeffrey found to be sane and ended up being sentenced to multiple life sentences in prison, spoiler alert, but not too long after his sentence started, he was killed by a fellow inmate. Nice, I wonder if the devil made him do it. Number four, John Bodkin Adams. He was once a general practitioner in the British community in Essex. Most of his patients were elderly, and he treated said elderly patients with care. For a bit. From 1946 to 1956, John had around 160 patients that died suspiciously, and that out of those 160, 132 of them left valuables for him. Wow, what are the odds? Must have been some really great care he was providing. Must have really touched their hearts. Not fishy at all in any way, shape, or form. Of course, the wills were later to be found fraudulent because, well, as per this list, obviously, you could have guessed. Worst part of all this, John was acquitted. His trial established the doctrine of double effect, which is where a doctor giving treatment with the aim of relieving pain may lawfully, as an unintentional result, shorten their lives. So they're like, eh, sometimes it happens, 132 times. So out of the dozens of cases that ended horribly, Adams was charged for only Two, that's it. He wasn't even convicted of their deaths even. He was guilty of forging prescriptions and falsifying medical forms. Number three, Hu Wanlin. Hu started his life in jail in the early 1900s and he was there as a result of human trafficking charges. Right off the bat, he's just, yep, yeah, go away, bye bye now. You would think once inside, prisoners would have a tough time continuing said practice, but not Hu Wanlin. While in jail, he kicked off his own medical practice. And then, in 1997, after a retrial, Hu was released from prison. Now, once released, Hu continued this medical practice that he started, again, behind bars, must I remind you. Again, he's not a doctor. Not really. He's not a medical practitioner. He's just a guy who was reading some books in jail. So for the next few years, he treated many people with this herbal remedy that actually contains sodium sulfate, which is very lethal. It is suspected that because of this, he ended up taking the lives of 146 people, who was arrested again in 1999 and was sentenced to only 15 years in prison for practicing medicine without a license. Yeah, that's the charge you're gonna get, okay. Shortly after his, again, release in 2014, it's believed that he was responsible for another death, this time of a 22-year-old student now, don't get me wrong, I believe people can change, you know, to a certain degree, like Robert Downey Jr. change, you know, this type of stuff. No, you can't risk having these people in public. It's not fair. 146 lives, we gotta avoid this at all costs. Number two, Aham Cardell. One of the worst of the worst when it comes to turkey serial killers. His nickname by the media, because apparently, like I said, everyone gets a cool DC villain's nickname. His nickname is the Izmir Monster. He killed a young woman in the mid 80s, but once he was checked into a mental hospital, he was either released or he escaped. It's a little bit blurry, but he did this multiple times. And then once he was out, he would repeat said disgusting crimes and then go back in. It was just a terrible, broken, vicious circle. He would leave, assault somebody and be sent back. It was the worst. Clearly something was not working. He shouldn't have been released once, nor should he have escaped, obviously. But after an escape in 2000, he was caught and then something really bizarre happened. You ever hear about the old story where the two, the only two vehicles in the world, there was like only two cars and they somehow ended up crashing? Here we go. He was killed by somebody else on this list. He was killed by this next evil person coming up at number one. Number one, Ali Kaya. Yep, it's all about who you know. Imagine running in two killers, running into each other. That's what happens. Nicknamed the Babyface Killer, Ali Kaya was convicted of 10 killings, but in 2012, the man was released after a report stated that he had a mental disorder. So this obviously leads into some other stuff. His next step at this point is perhaps everybody's worst nightmare. He immediately attacked those who had testified against him during his original trial. He ended up taking the lives of three of those people and leaving two others injured. He was then recaptured in 2013. Thankfully, nobody else got hurt after his initial release. But remember that horrible guy I just mentioned at number two, Ahim Cardle? Well, when he was finally put back into that mental facility after escaping and killing over and over, this is the guy that ended up taking his life in jail. What do you know, you played yourself. Ali Kaya killed Ahim Cardle in jail in 2000, 
small world. I guess it's all about who you know, or who you should know, or who you shouldn't know, I guess, in this case. Yeah, ironic, but twisted nonetheless. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Bye.